Hey guys, today we'll be working on my 2015 Kia Optima SXL Turbo. We'll be adjusting the wastegate voltage. So I just ran the car for a couple seconds and turned it off. That should allow the wastegate to set itself at its home position for the reading. So there are a couple different methods you can use to read the voltage of the wastegate. For starters, I'll show you how to read the voltage using an OBD diagnostics tool like this Foxwell AutoMaster Pro. This reader plugs directly into your OBD port located underneath the steering wheel behind this cover. If you do not have a tool like this, I'll show you how to read the voltage using a multimeter and some wire shortly. Once you've connected the reader, You'll have to push the push button start twice to ensure that all the accessories are powered on, but make sure that you keep your foot off the brake so that the car does not physically turn over and start. So what we're looking for is the wastegate voltage on this particular system. We'll go to Diagnostic, Asia, Kia, Smart VIN, it'll automatically detect the VIN. We'll select USA, that's currently where I'm located, and it picked up the vehicle. Select engine, engine control, read, we'll do live data. We select F1, it'll select all the live data. And then we click F3, OK, to start reading. Here it's picking up all the live data from the ECM. We'll jump right to the bottom and locate the wastegate voltage. And on the reader, we can see that the voltage for the wastegate is currently set at 3.69 volts. I've read a couple different ranges some state 4.2 plus or minus one others 4.0 plus or minus one basically if you go over 4.2 you risk your car throwing a code and possibly going into limp mode if it's too low you might have an under boost which may also throw the car uh, a code in the car so what i'm going to shoot for is just 4.0 that seems to be a safe set point all right and presuming that you don't have a OBD diagnostics tool like I show in this video. I'll show you another way that you can check the voltage with your standard multimeter and a small piece of wire. So the first thing you want to do is remove the engine cover. Simply pop up each corner. and lift. All this was held on with were these four prongs. Alright, if we take a look in the back of the engine, we'll see our wastegate, and there's a cable that's plugged directly into it. So what we're going to have to do is take our bare stripped copper wire and push the end into where the yellow wire is currently going into the connection. So what I'm going to do is pull that connector out, that way I can have more room to work on it. Alright, so I should be able to just reach in, press on the top here, and pull it out of place. Yep, and there we go. So now you can see the yellow wire. Alright, so here we can see I was able to push this red bare wire that I'm using down into the yellow wire where it's making a connection. Make sure that it breaches the area where the wire, the yellow wire is actually going into the connection. That way you know for a fact that it's touching. And then we'll plug it back in. Good. Right. Now the other end of the bare wire that I'm using, I just have twisted around this positive portion of the multimeter. 
So we'll set that aside. And then we have to attach our ground somewhere. So I'll we'll just find a piece of metal. Should be fine. Then we'll turn it on. Okay, and we really shouldn't be getting any reading anyways. So what we'll have to do is put the car in accessory mode and then take a reading. All right, so we're not going to start the car. We just want to push the start button once. And then push it again. That'll turn all the accessories on. And then we can go to the front of the car and check out our multimeter. Still reading zero, so we're probably not getting a good ground. Just fiddle around here. Yeah, we just need a better ground. All right, so I'm actually using the ground of the battery for this reading. And this part of the video was taken after making the adjustments to the wastegate arm, so we're at the ideal set point of around 4.0. However, I'll show you now what we have to do in order to make those necessary adjustments. Next, we'll come to the back of the engine. And right here is the O2 sensor line. It's simply just pushed on back here. You can just pop that out of place. And then this back heat shield is what needs to be loosened. I currently only have one bolt holding this in because I just replaced the turbo. You'll probably have three, but you really only need to pop this top one off in order to slide this back out of the way. So just a 10 millimeter socket. We'll loosen this guy. And like I said, I've only got that one bolt holding this in, so I can completely remove it. Alright, so with the wastegate voltage being low, we'll have to loosen this arm and make the adjustments outward to raise the voltage. If your voltage was high, you would have to tighten it and decrease the length of this physical arm by tightening this end. What I like to do is put a rag right underneath because we're going to be popping this lock washer off the back and it has a tendency to fall down into the engine compartment. Since our voltage is low, we'll have to make an adjustment to the wastegate arm. You can see on this side, there is a nut which locks this unit in place. So, We'll have to pop this arm back, loosen the nut, and make the adjustments. So first I will attempt to break this nut loose. There we go. So now that that's free, we have to disconnect the arm. There's a little lock washer here, which you can use a flat head to pop back. And that's where the rag comes in handy. And here she is. Now that that washer is off, 
You can slide this arm out of place, but be careful because there's another washer in between the arm and the bracket. And if your voltage is low, you'll want to adjust this arm out going clockwise. If it's high and you need to lower it, you can tighten it by going counterclockwise. Once you've made your adjustments, you can slide the arm back into place and push the lock washer into place. So usually it's extremely tight. You can't push it with your hand. What I like to do is take another small screwdriver, just place it on top and push, push the top of the screwdriver down. And there it locked into place. The last few steps are just to tighten everything back up. This nut that we loosened, we want to make sure it's tight on there against the part that we made adjustments to. Good. Okay, so I'm going to let the car start and run for a second. Just to make sure everything is synchronized, I'll give it a little bit of gas. Just let it run a couple seconds. Turn the car completely off, keep the foot off the brake, and then press the button once. Twice. And now we can go back to our OBD tool and take another voltage reading. Here we can see that the voltage for the waste gate is now set to 4.06. Again, some people say 4.2 plus or minus one, others shoot for 4.0. Some shoot just under 4.0 because they feel it'll make an adjustment as they drive and the car warms up. So 4.06 is good enough for me. Then we'll put the heat shield back in place. Good and tight and out of the way of the actuator arm. And last, make sure that the O2 sensor wire is in this bracket. And then we can put the engine cover back in place. This is simply pushed into place on these prongs here. line up with the holes on the bottom these four spots so what I like to do is just hold it at this angle place it in the back try to align those two into place good and then just push down until they pop into place all set I hope this video was informative and helped somebody out so if you could, please leave a like and subscribe below.